Um, well, thank you for um, you know, inviting me to speak. Um, what I want to do, I won't, be, I won't speak for very long. Um, I want to just show you some slides of my work and then some of the work I've been doing here um, to support emerging artists and then how that's going to go into uh, supporting um, artists in, in Lagos, in Nigeria, and also creating a space for international exchange. Um, so that was um, a piece I had on the London Underground. You know, that was a, that was a few years ago. Um, but can we go to the next one? And that's um, the Royal Academy in London. So I, co I cover the facade of the Royal Academy. Um, okay, so can we go to the next one? And uh, some of you may have seen this uh, in Trafalgar Square. That's um, um, Nelson's Ship in a Bottle. That's also another project of mine. And then go to the next one. Um, that's a project I had at a Fitzrovia Chapel. And uh, I won't say too much about these works. It's just to give you a sense of context. And can we go to the next one? And that's a piece I had at uh, Central Park in New York. Um, so one of my public art projects. And then the next one. So this piece is currently at Tate Modern. And it's going to be there until uh, November. So if you, you know, and the piece is really about immigration. It's about um, celebrating people, who, uh, first and second generation um, immigrants who've made a significant contribution to British culture. Um, so their names are on the spines. And you can also find out about the, you know, the people. So really, really at the um, computers there. So that's really to uh, promote, you know, diversity within culture. And uh, so we go to the next one. Okay, so, and then to give you uh, context, uh, so if we uh, step back, okay, and go forward. Okay, so um, this is my studio in London. And in my studio, I've created artist residencies for about 11 years now, artists send in proposals and they get the space for a month. And, um, and so we've been running some you know, fairly successful projects there. Um, the artists send in their proposals and it's all different art forms as well. And so can we go to the next slide so that the next image will, yeah, so, so that's, um, a sense of some of the projects that happen there. Um, okay, next one. And so, you know, I do kind of music, theater, um, so that's a kind of music event also on the 10th anniversary. Uh, okay, we go to the next one. Okay, so the important thing to say is that a lot of young artists, um, especially in London, have difficulty finding spaces to actually show their work. And so providing a platform like that is actually very important. And so we go to the next one. And that's a kind of a dance project that's happening in that space. And the next one. Okay, and then you know, we have a, a supper club to kind of raise money for the, uh, for the space. And that's that event. So we'll go to the next one. Okay, so, uh, okay, so if we I'll stop there. Now, what I'm actually doing next is called, um, I'm doing something in Lagos. And so I'm working with Elsie Owusu, um, you know, the architect, to create a, sim you know, a similar space in Lagos. But essentially, it's about cultural exchange. And so I will be able to have three international artists in residence and so we'll provide them with, you know, they'll, they'll have a bedroom, uh, they'll have, there's, a, there's going to be a gallery and studios there where they can work. Essentially, um, it's about artists here going over there to learn. Most people don't know 
much about Africa or they don't quite know how to go there. And so by creating that infrastructure, we should be able to support a lot of artists. And I've done residencies in the past myself. I did one in Senegal and one in Stockholm. And you never actually come back the same. And especially right now, you know, with the conflicts going on around the world, there's a misunderstanding amongst people. Um, it's important that people get, you know, get educated by actually visiting other cultures and learning from other cultures. And essentially also the artist on the ground um, in Nigeria can also learn a lot from the visiting artists. And so um, the project we've created um, you know, has been designed by um, Elsie. And then um, I should hand over to, to Elsie to say a little bit more about it, about the building. stand up to do this, I'm afraid. Um, so um, it's just great to see this lovely audience. So thanks very much for um, missing the omnibus edition of Coronation Street to <laughs> come and see us this morning. Um, so as Yinka said, um, this is a, um, a sort of a combination of a studio, gallery and residence, um, both for himself and for artists in residence. And um, the site is in um, Lagos, in Lekki, in Nigeria. Um, and I'm assuming, um, this, this slide is, uh, this presentation is actually assuming that people don't know anything at all about um, Africa, um, which I, I don't think is an uh, unfair assumption for most audiences. It's obviously not this one. So if I could have the next slide, please. Um, so this is just a little bit about um, the work that we do in our practice and our, um, our, our inspiration, if you like, and the wish to communicate. And if you look in the bottom left-hand side, most people think of architects as usually a white, white man with a roll of, um, of drawings under his arm. But my view is that this girl on the bottom left-hand corner is much more uh, the... The, the sort of architect that we can expect to see in the future. Most architects that I know don't work at drawing boards. They work, if they're like me, on their phone, in the palm of their hand. Um, and also, I think it's important to see that the inspiration that Africa brings is about youth, is about energy, it's about um, cultural diversity. And this is a range of, uh, which we can, through which we can work. And indeed, this project... Um, is being worked from um, UK to, um, to Ghana to Nigeria. So the, um, the access that we have, the cultural access and the technical ac access, is a great inspiration. And also it reminds you um, how globalized the story of Africa is and has become. Next slide, please. Um, so a little bit of context, uh, location of the site um, and how key it is to the, the context, both the context and um, the, the construction. Um, a little bit about the site. So um, the Lekki itself is, uh, the site itself is surrounded by a lot of wealth um, and um, as you can see, um, lots of eclectic styles, people that are importing um, cultural influences from all over the world. Um, and Yinka, who's been a great, great client, was very clear that it wasn't going to be um, a sort of, in what in Ghana we call a bean-to um, mansion. Um, so you can see that um, from the, the building itself, we're very close to the sea, and I think that once it's established, there will be, we will try and maintain as much access to the sea um, by view as possible. 
Um, so cultural influences, um, looking at how ramps have been used um, historically in architecture. Um, this is an important point to make, is the influence of African architecture, both in uh, um, uh, art and architecture, both in modernism and in, um, in art, has been very strong, um, quite often unrecognized. So we're trying to bring some of that back. We're trying to reclaim some of that appropriation in the design of the house. Um, and Yinka has mentioned his own work. And this has been a very strong influence. Um, if you see that the house is essentially it's built around a ramp. And the ramp isn't just a means of access. The ramp is a place and it's a room and a space. And a place to contemplate and a place to read and um, meet. Um, so when we started off, we were working with our colleagues in Biotica in Albania. Um, so Albania, Germany, um, UK, and Nigeria, and Ghana. Um, and this is a, a con concept of how to bring the green, how to bring the green into the center of the, uh, into the, center of the building. So um, the um, well-known concept of the African courtyard as a place of congregation, a place of meeting, and um, a place for performance is very strong. Um, so inspired by um, one of Yinka's great works, which he showed um, previously, the ramp is shielded by a screen, which you can see in, on the top right-hand side. And this is um, a 30-meter structure, which is both functional, but is also decorative, and is a statement about um, the work of the artist um, turned into structure. Um, so these drawings show the engineering forms and how the screen was built and how it um, in interacts the house. And sustainability has been very important. The use of, um, of sustainable energy, whether it's wind, um, solar power, photovoltaics, um, and th the fact that the house is as much off-grid and consuming as little um, unrenewable resource as possible. Um, so this is one of the first designs that came, um, came as a result of our collaboration. And it's showing um, the house itself, how it can be closed, how it can be opened, the central courtyard, and also uh, a pool which is up on the second floor, um, supported by stilts, or pillity, as architects like to say in their very um, posh way. Um, so, um, just looking at this, this was great because we started off with Yinka's inspiration and very clear um, idea about how he wanted the house to work. And then we began to put it into diagrammatic form. Um, at this point, we didn't really know that much about the site. But um, wonderfully, when, the, when we did get the dimensions for the site, they matched almost exactly to um, our, our aspirations. Um, but the single story became three stories, as you'll see, <laughs> you'll see here. So um, looking, looking back, um, so the, the, the central courtyard is essentially a, a space for congregation and performance um, and um, parties, if you like. And that gives into the gallery, um, which is now called the Great Room, which is on the top left-hand side. So um, the studios, the artists in residence, can work on this site but then the work can also be shown with other work in the gallery. Um, because of the size of some of the great work that's being shown, the, the courtyard has to be accessible um, to, um, to get work in. So we had a bit of a, a, a challenge trying to work out how lorries can get in and out of such a tight site. Um, and um, following on from guest projects, there's the and the kitchen that can be used to prepare um, food for events, and also a staff annex. Um, so we just continue to work diagrammatically, um, making sure that our colleagues in Lagos um, were helping us to conform to the local regulations. Um, and then this became a plan. So you see here, um, how the entrance to the courtyard. Um, so there is a gatehouse and then the, um, the, the annex 
for people who are working on the site. Um, and then the studios for the guest projects. Um, so this is guest projects writ large and coming to, guest projects comes to Africa. That sounds like a, that sounds like a movie, doesn't it? Um, so, and then going to the upper floor, you can see that the accommodation for the artist in residence is incredibly comfortable. Um, there's a space for each artist, their own ensuite uh, room, and also um, a space for sitting a lounge. Um, and then we go to the engineering diagrams, which you see here. Um, and if you remember the original diagrams, which were so um, sparse, and working with the great, wonderful engineer, um, Matthew, from Technica, how the house re relates to the climate. So we wanted it to be as naturally cooled as possible, using as little air conditioning as possible. So it's orientated, working with XCO2, who are sustainability, sustainability engineers, um, and um, look, look at uh, mechanical and electrical systems as well. We designed the house so that it can be self-cooled, if you like, um, as much as possible. Um, and then um, this is one of the original, one of the first views that we did, looking at how um, the screen um, sits in the street and how um, it's quite a modest entrance from the street. Looking at the ramp. Um, and then um, the interiors inspired by some of Yinka's work. Uh, Yinka, I always get this wrong. What, what, are, the, what are the names of the, the pieces here? Because I, always, I, I, th I think it's about people having fun at a dinner party, but I think it's so, something more complicated than that. No, the one on the left uh, was done at the time of the crash, the economic crash, and it's called the Last Supper. Right. And then that one is called Scramble for Africa, when European countries di divided Af Africa up. Right. Yeah. So, guys, architects being very simple-minded people, I thought this was about people having a dinner party. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, so we are bears of little brain, so you'll have to forgive us for that. Um, um, and then um, looking at how the planting... Um, rises through the courtyard and becomes part of the house and also helps to cool, cool the building. So we are now um, we are at the point where um, tenders have been sought and brought in by the wonderful Lagos team. And um, I think we're ready to sign contracts. The foundations are in um, and we're ready to do the superstructure. So um, architects being architects, we're still tinkering around with the screen and tweaking it and, um, and maintaining our inspiration from the original screen, which Yinka did, which is called And the Wall Fell, fell away. away. And yeah. the Wall Fell Away. So that has become um, the inspiration for the screen, which shields the, the, is the, the building from the weather, protects the ramp, but is also um, security for the building. So, um, I'll just go back. Yeah. Um, so thanks very much for that. Um, look forward to answering questions in due course. Uh, and thank you. So um, before Papa is going to go next, and Papa is going to talk about um, some of the things that um, we're planning to do um, so the, pro the plan is that the project may get bigger outside of the house, and Papa will tell us more about that. But before Papa speaks, I just want to say very quickly that, um, first of all, I must say a huge thank you to, I have two very strong African women behind me uh, making this project possible. And that, you know, being paying country is the lawyer and Bingwe, do you mind standing up? Because we have to say thank you to you. Yeah. So, foundation, so, you know, gas foundation. And I'm in the process of actually trying to um, build an endowment for the project. 
So within two years, I'm hoping to raise a million pounds endowment so that we can start. So those of you with deep pockets. Um, you Is know, the minister still here? You know exactly, <laughs> you know exactly where to go. But you know, on a more serious note, I think a lot of artists will benefit from this. And, you know, and I feel so lucky that you know, it's only a tiny contribution, but hopefully it'll have a really big effect. And, um, okay, Papa, over to you. I forgot, you forgot, we both forgot to mention the third strong African woman. Oh, absolutely, no, no, absolutely. So there's, no, 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 there's, uh, so um, Elsie is another strong African woman supporting me. And also in Nigeria, um, Lola Shonibare is the architect um, in Lagos who's actually been helping us with all of the local, um, you, you know, the local things and, you know, advising us. So, and we've been, so we're all working together. So it's um, three strong African women and one, <laughs> one, one, one African, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Great. Um, so, Yinka, I'm, I think I'd like to ask you some questions as we're going through the slides. Yes. I mean, you were away from Nigeria for about 30 years. And yeah, more. Yeah. yeah, more or less. And you've sort of been going back quite frequently. Yes. And it'd be interesting as maybe I move through the slides yes. and we take this image, for instance, which is the wind sculpture. I think on the left, is it in New York? In New York, that's and right. And the yes. right is the wind sculpture in Lagos. In that's right, Lhasa. yes. So I'd like to hear what has driven this impetus to really participate in the art scene uh, in, in Nigeria. Okay. Um, well, you see, I, I did grow up in Nigeria. Um, and so I left when I was about 17, came to the UK. And then, you know, went to art school after that. Um, and then, you know, if you grow up in a place, there's always a kind of pull, a kind of nostalgic pull. And then, you know, I want to, I've been extremely fortunate, you know, and, you know, most of us, we, we complain, oh, things don't work well in Africa, the infrastructure is not great. But then we're not there. You know, what can we do? So if you imagine if every single person makes, even if it's just a tiny contribution, and also, you know, all of the skills that we've managed to gain uh, from studying abroad, you know, I mean, the place will be amazing. And the, and the development in Lagos, you know, since I've been going back as well, I mean, things are improving. I mean, they're far better than they were when I was, um, you know, when I was a youngster growing up there. Yeah. So, and I want, and there's energy in Lagos, you know, so I want to be part of that. You know, there's a, you know, there's all kinds of incredible things. I mean, Nollywood didn't exist when I lived in Nigeria. You know, Nollywood, Lagos Fashion Week, you know, Artex, you know, and the music scene is, you know, Afrobeat is worldwide, you know. And so there's a kind of young energy and the potential is huge even like economically, I mean, the potential is absolutely huge. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. And also, there's a lot you can actually do with culture, you know, for employment, for quality of life. You know, you can do incredible things with the arts. And I wish governments all around the world would realize that, including the British government. You know, there's a lot you can do. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and in talking about the Inspiration Farm, I think one of the things that was central, uh, it's in the Lekki coastal community, so the, the guest projects is in very, in very much in the urban center. Yes. The Inspiration Farm is very much further out in, in more of a rural agricultural landscape. And I know one of the things that was very important to you is this idea of community um, you know, in, in the guest studios in London, there's a sense of building an artistic community. Yes. Uh, here in Lagos, again, it's about 
building community. But we should, we should define what inspiration farm is yes. for people who don't know. Would you yeah, like I can to do that very quickly. Talk about that. So basically, um, there's the issue of sustainability and also the importance of, um, you know, the arts on the one hand and food production on the other. But I wanted to create something, you know, I understand the, the model of museums in the West. Um, and I commissioned a report to actually study uh, museums in Nigeria. Uh, the, my initial idea was to support the building of a museum. And then I realized that actually that will not be sustainable because even museums in the West struggle. And they, um, you know, museums, you require so much money to keep them going. And you need a lot of skills. You know, you need a lot of skilled curators. Um, and so I decided that actually start organically with a small project, which is the residency space. And then I thought that I didn't want to exclude people. So I thought having a farm with a sculpture park and an event hire space, and also the farm will make it possible for local people to actually work and be involved in, in, in the project. So this is not just an elitist uh, project with you know, international artists going there. You know, local people will feel a sense of ownership and also you know, we can produce uh, food you know, and train people in agriculture as well, which is absolutely essential. And it can also be used you know, as, a, as a retreat because it's only 45 minutes from the uh, you know, from Lagos. But essentially, Inspiration Farm is a commercial uh, project. So we're, we're looking to speak to other partners to, uh, to support that. And the idea is that that will actually be an income generating project as opposed to, um, you know, a lot of kind of museums that you just have to put so much money in. Whereas um, the residency is not for profit, but this is more of a business. And so we'll hand that over to him. So again, it was this idea which Jinka has explained. It was about looking at creating a really sustainable business. And obviously working, one of the things we do in our practice is really look at how we can create spaces that are for the public, but in themselves self-sustaining. Self I think you know, this idea that everything that happens on the continent or everything that happens in Nigeria is pro bono and NGO is sort of problematic. There is a lot of an entrepreneurship. There's a real need to, to develop projects that are commercial, that they can sustain themselves and have a long uh, life, life cycle. So really it was about creating this organic space that looked at two of the most growing industries in Nigeria currently, which is the agricultural industry and the creative economy, and bringing those two together to create a really unique, uh, unique place that doesn't exist currently in, in Lagos and that is open, open to all. Again, you know, it's about creating spaces for art, thinking about the city in new ways. So these are just images of that's the new Leckie, Leckie Ekbe Bridge, which is really interesting about how public spaces are being created uh, in Lagos, how this was a bridge, and it's now one of the most well-known public spaces. People use it for, for running, wedding photo shoots, all sorts. And this is an entrance. The, the bottom left is a, is a drive towards the, the Inspiration Farm site. Um, and then again, these are some photographs on the left of, of the site that we're currently looking at. And again, this is a farmer, the idea of the site. Ekbe is a very well-known district for farming, uh, local fishing communities, and it's about working with them, the local communities participating with them um, on, on the site. And this is just a very brief overview. Um, so we have about 20, 20 uh, 20 hectares um, around with this central space that has the event space, as Yinka has pointed out, 
surrounded by a sculpture garden that has artist work that is open to the general public. There's a nursery um, and then some resident spaces for, for artists uh, to, to come to also. These are more 3D visuals showing, uh, I guess, the conceptual narrative, the materiality of the space. Again, a lot of it comes from thinking about the sand in Ekpe, uh, the sand in uh, the soil in the area, which is quite, quite red as you get towards Ogun State, um, looking at local ways of building, uh, adobe and... Um, and using those elements to create this very public and beautiful oasis, hopefully for the, for the general public, that bridges this relationship between art and, art and agriculture. And again, as Yinka said, the importance of it is to be self-sustaining for the artists to, both the artists that come there to be able to grow, the, the community that work on the farm, and for the general public to come and engage in these two worlds. So on the left is a, an organization that does hydroponics. This is one of their facilities. So they're part of the community partnerships that the, the farm will be working with. And then these are just a few, view, few more visuals. So I, I think what would be good now is to have some questions. Now what would be good now is to say that we need serious partners and investments. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do need serious partners and investment. I think, I think this is one of, I think what the both schemes represent, and I think maybe you can talk a little bit more, is showing your passion and commitment to creating really important infrastructure. I think it's one thing that we always talk about is the importance of infrastructure and how that infrastructure can't just always be led by governments. I think it's also individuals and private sector who understand about creating sustainable infrastructure that is commercial, that ensures that it's, it's focused on the right, you know, the right needs. Um, so perhaps you could talk a little bit more about. No, no, absolutely, yes. That. I mean, I think that enterprise, enterprise is absolutely important, you know. I mean, most of us grew up seeing, you know, starving children in Africa. And, you know, but actually when you go to Lagos, as you know, people are very enterprising. And I think that, you know, this is not about going with a begging bowl to anyone. You know, this is about being self-sufficient. It's also, you know, and just in terms of nature and the environment, you know, um, to actually teach people how to live with the land you know, Lagos is actually very, it's very urban. And it's, you know, and also farming is not something that people want to do or they think is for them. And so this is a, a process of just changing people's mindsets to understand that you can actually live with the land, you can produce from the land, and, you know, you can create culture, you know, within the land, you know, you can have, I mean, imagine if people, because in Lagos, you know, people, they go to weddings, they go to, you know, but to, to be able to actually have a space like that, where people can actually have, you know, leisure activities and they can relax, because we're also going to have accommodation there, because obviously we want to be able to um, get money that way as well. So people can actually use it as a retreat, and artists can, will have studios there. And also what I didn't mention is that we will, the plan is to have artist studios and a print workshop as well, where we can, we can actually give artists skills in printmaking. Uh, it's also one of the things that we're you know, thinking about. So it's really about thinking about skills that people can actually make a living from those things. Uh, and so you know, the idea is that the investment that we put in Hopefully, after about three years, it, the, the space should be independent and self-sustaining. Yeah. I think it'd be good to open open up the floor for a Q and A right now. Yeah. I think there's somebody on the floor with a mic in case anybody has any questions.
Thank you so much for um, this, this amazing start to uh, the expo. It's quite an honor to hear you speak, Yunka, and uh, Elsie, of course, and um, Papa. So I just uh, had a question about sort of the perception of uh, communal use and public use in uh, crowded cities and hubs like Lagos in Nigeria. Was there any resistance in terms of municipal permissions and um, if you like the over, overarching sort of uh, local government um, perceptions around public use spaces that are as creative and as vibrant as the one you want to design, but which classically in Lagos, we've often thought of access being prohibited to the public for spaces, full stop. Classically, people have their compounds and the concept is that if you are not an owner, you're not welcome. So do you feel as though this project is part of a wider piece around convincing municipal authorities, but also convincing uh, the community at large to open up to the concept of public spaces and the utility and enrichment of that? I'm gonna run for 10 seconds and then pass the baton over to you. Okay. Um, the, the area that we're looking at, or rather with the area where we've identified uh, for the Inspiration Farm project is designated agricultural land. So it's an area that has been zoned um, for development within the agricultural industry. In working with the municipalities and the local government, um, I think what is great about Lagos State right now is that they're really looking to work with partners that have innovative projects that, that focus on both the creative economy and agriculture. So on that level, there's, there's a lot of uh, goodwill. Uh, with the local community, it's always a case of going to them before you start. Um, I think previously, when things have been sort of like forced upon them, that's where you've always got the conflict and you don't get the buy-in. I think one of the things in the projects that we work on in our office, and I know one of the things that are important to Yinkao on this project, and I'm sure he'll talk about that a little bit, is the importance of carrying the community along, getting them to participate in the process, and understanding that this is something that would not just create uh, revenue for the Inspiration Farm itself, but that will now spread to, 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 to the wider community, and that's a positive thing. But I think that happens at the very early stages. As, as we're planning and as we're developing this, and as we're bringing in partners to work with us and making sure that everybody is aligned along that, that, um, that path. Inka, do you want to? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, um, you know, I certainly would like to involve the local community. And I don't know whether you guys have heard of, um, you know, area boys. But, you, you know, but that, you know, I'd certainly like to get the kind of area boys involved I'd like to get, you know, that's why I don't really want to have like a Tate Modern, you know, because I just don't think that works in that context. I think it should be some, you know, something open that people can actually, you know, have jobs and work there. And also, you know, um, as Papa said, if you involve the local people at the outset, then they will have ownership of the space and they can, they can help to kind of you know, protect the space, and so that's kind of what we're, you know, hoping to achieve. Um, so, um, yeah. it seems strange to say, but I have quite fond memories of area boys. Um, <laughs> cause, uh, when, w when we worked on the, um, the bus rapid transit system, the blue, blue buses in, in Lagos, it really was important to be engaged with the area boys and the people who Ran the Danfos and the Molueys because if anybody could frustrate the success of a system, that they they were the they were the they were the people. But just talking about um, the 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 house, the residents and the artists in residence, I think what was really key for us was having our colleagues in Lagos 
who were there talking to the local authority and actually explaining why this innovation was really important and how it would fit in with the surroundings. So like the, um, the guest projects in London, it is essentially a private space, a hyb hybrid private public space. So you only come in with permission, um, as, in, as in guest projects. But the courtyard, the, the area of the traditional courtyard being a space for meeting and performance and, um, and show, if you like, display, was, is something which is inherent to the African um, typology of, of, the, of the home, um, I think all across, certainly all across West Africa. So I think it didn't take much persuading, but it needed belief and trust in the inspiration that was behind, behind the idea. So it took quite a long time to get planning consent um, but it was great when the, when the drawings came back with eventually with a stamp, um, they were very little altered and it isn't like in the UK where you have a lot of pushing and pulling with the planners insisting that you do things a certain way. They wanted explanation, which is fair enough, but they weren't um, set on designing the project for you and that was a, that was a real... Um, Relief. Well, actually. You, you must mention that um, we've been working on this now for about six years. I bought the land about seven years ago. That's so true. So it's not been very easy, you know. Um, you know, so you know, there's a there's a lot of patience required. But um, yes, well, we, we had we had that conversation earlier on this week about um, about the comparison with childbirth, and the great thing is that um, when the delivery <laughs> finally happens, you forget all the pain. Um, and people stand around with glasses and champagne and congratulate themselves. So we're looking, we're looking forward to that point. I think we have five minutes. Five? Okay. Think. Thank you very much. That was really enjoyable and informative. Um, I, do, I have two questions, really. One, in terms of the community that you've discussed, will you have specific community engagement programs that will be around using your facilities and teaching the skills such as printmaking versus having um, the, I guess, the, the use of the facilities being primarily for artists who are part of your program? Um, so, I mean, just bringing in local people. And secondly, um, I like you, you mentioned printmaking and other skills, and one of the areas that I'm interested in is the ceramics and art ceramics um, in Nigeria. And I understand that there have been a lot of challenges and just in terms of the tertiary education, the access to facilities and resources. And so I just wanted to hear whether you would have a kiln or any f facilities for ceramic artists. Thank you. Well, I mean, there's an artist uh, in Lagos called uh, Kweju Alatishe. She already has a facilities for that. I mean, she's got a kiln and she's trying to set something up. I mean, she's already set it up. Um, I don't quite know how that's going. Uh, but of course, you know, the, both the small residency, I mean, we will make links with local institutions and educational uh, institutions. We'll make links with them. And, uh, you know, this is not about kind of parachuting something in. I mean, it's also very much about local involvement. And then, if we get the investments we need for the farm, then we will do things there too. And of course, it's about local dialogue. We, it can't be done without that kind of local dialogue and also involving people there uh, locally in education and so on. So, yeah, so I mean, that's the reason for setting all this up, really. And um, the, the residency space, I mean, I'm funding the, the building on my own, so the, you know, the capital um, you know, expenditure is mine, but the ongoing support, I will be seeking partners to uh, support people to do that and to support local programs as well. I'm not sure if we have any more time for questions. Do we have one more? I just wanted to thank you for certain inspirational program and 
some, a plan that is so integrated into the local context and that feels very much um, aligned with the local needs. Uh, my question is related to the, um, the artist project as in what is going to be the plan for um, or the programming for an exchange between the international artists that will be traveling and the local um, the local artists that that are based um, that are based in Nigeria. Yes, yes. So um, the idea is to have to always have an African artist on the residency program, and also um, people who go there from here will always make presentations about their work, and the local artists will make presentations about their work too. I mean, in my space in London. You know, we usually do lots of artist talks and presentations and workshops. And artists don't necessarily actually have to produce a product at the end. You know, it's mostly about process. And it's about artists learning from each other. So the artists who go from here will really learn a lot. And then they can bring that back here and educate other people about, you know, about Africa. And then the idea is to also bring other artists from different parts of the continent to do the residency. And I'm also very keen on bringing people from the African diaspora. So I'm talking about African Americans and British Africans as well. So some, some of them will be going to Africa for the first time. And this will be, you know, and then we'll link them to a lot of kind of uh, things locally that they can learn about their own heritage and so on. So, I mean, the project is really important on many, many levels. So it's not just about like creating art objects, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a real kind of cultural exchange. I think that's a perfect summary of, of what the intentions for both projects are, which is about uh, engaging with the local capacity, exchanging with the international audience, and really understanding that this is not about objects, it's really about the engagement, it's about the process, it's about learning about how we make, um, and I think that's all we have time for.